Michael Rapino is the CEO of Live Nation, and if you haven't watched the stock lately, well, you've missed an incredible run over the last, actually, since you went public. It's kind of been almost straight up. Um, so what do you say to investors now, Michael, who may think, well, I missed it. You know, I missed the great growth opportunity. This thing trades at fairly high multiples, given its growth rate, though, perhaps they deserve it. Nonetheless, the big move has already happened. Right. You know, we look at Live Nation, is, it's got this incredible tailwind called the live music business. So forgot, forget Live Nation for a sec. Around the world, the demand for the live show is bigger than ever. A 19-year-old in Colombia is just excited to sell an arena out to see uh, Rihanna, as in Detroit. So the internet has really unlocked this global potential of a, of a live customer. We are a large, the largest company in the world, but we still only have 30% market share. We look at it still as a real fragmented global business. And for the next five years, we think we can add another 30, 40 million fans to our flywheel. Where are you at, 33 million now, something like 90 that? 90 million fans it's went to a Live Nation fans. show this year. How much would that be market share wise if you were 30% already? We think we're, you know, we think we got on a global basis. We still think it's a huge upside um, at 30% global market share at 90 million fans. We've almost doubled in the last five years. We think we can continue to double that business over the next 10, at minimum add about 40 to 50 million fans by continuing to either organically or through bolt-on acquisitions grow our global market share. So we believe live music is passionate, top three thing that a consumer wants to do in life. On a global basis, we have a lot of market share left. You know, it's funny. Uh, I mean, it's hard to disagree with you. At the same time, I know a lot of these VR applications, for example, showcase the idea of being live at right. the concert when you're not. Yeah. Is that just an adjunct, or does that ever become a threat to this idea that it, you don't have to be there, or you do have to be there live? Yeah, we think, you know, the business is exciting because it's not duplicatable. That two hours that you go with your wife, your, your college roommates to reminisce on ACDC or your son's first concert, those are, those are Kodak moments. Those are not duplicatable. It's great to watch Drake on YouTube, but going to that show and getting that, you know, that hair, that moment where you're so excited about the show, those, those moments are not duplicatable. Although everybody's still holding their phones up. They're not even watching the show half the time. I don't understand that, by the way. I have an eight-year-old who made me take him to a Drake show because Drake played Fortnite the game. Right. That's how, it, you know, even at that age, they start to understand the, the power of live. Now, you guys are focused on, and I know you spent some time on your conference call talking about it as well, digital tickets and right. why that be becomes so much more important in terms of what you can potentially sell and the relationship you have with the customer. Explain to me why that's an important initiative. Well, it's a bit of a, uh, an outdated model. The ticket today has been a barcode. And, you know, most barcodes got long uh, replaced by digital, airline tickets, hotels, et cetera. So the problem today is the barcode is the ticket. It gets duplicated. When I actually sell you a ticket, I don't know if you're coming to the show or you gave that to your, your wife or you sold it on a marketplace. Um, when the ticket becomes digital, you now have an identity. Now we have a relationship with you. I know that you transferred it, two tickets to your sons. I know who you came with. I know who's in the venue. We now can talk to you while you're in the venue. We can upsell you on some merchandise. Increases our database overall. And more importantly, we've done it with the NFL this year and launched it in all our stadiums. You start to authenticate the ticket. You can decide how that ticket is resold, whether it's resold, who resells it, maybe even how much the lift is put on that upsell. So now the sports team and the artist has a new way to actually control the identity of the ticket, follow that ticket all through the sales pattern right to the front door of the venue. So incredible control for content to decide how that ticket eventually is sold and a whole bunch of new value to the consumer. How far along are we on that effort and how expensive is that going to be? This was a big year for us in, in the NFL. We launched Labor Day. Uh, every NFL ticket in 2018 was sold as a digital mobile ticket. Every stadium had a mobile entry reader. Uh, we sat on Labor Day weekend at Ticketmaster watching as all these people showed up at stadiums, worked flawlessly scaled it this year across all stadiums. So what would you add in terms of the potential then to communicate, I guess, with that customer? And are, do you have any metrics you can share at this yeah. point in terms of what you're seeing? I mean, this year was the implementation year. Can we get 50,000 people through a stadium on a digital ticket? We'll actually start making that barcode uh, much more uh, encrypted. So, you, so, so it is a real uh, digital security. Um, and this year, we'll start testing into 19 
when you're on site, when you're there, how can we now help you with that experience? Now you guys have significant top line growth, uh, significant growth in a number of areas, although I, uh, at least your CFO, your president talking about margins being flat. Why is that? Well, our business overall, you know, we have kind of a flywheel that feeds our high margin. Those 30,000 shows a year we do are the low margin business. That's our content. And we're going to spend over $6 billion a year putting 30,000 shows in 41 countries. We've always looked at that as our competitive advantage. Scale our content, and it feeds our three high margin businesses. Sponsorship, 70% margin business. Ticketing, a 20 plus margin business. And on-site, which is a 20 plus margin business. So we've never focused so much on whether we're a two or three percent margin on the show. Mm -hmm. We really focus on creating high margin businesses from our scale. All of those are grow growing at double digits and we're adding more of them. Artists have increasingly come to depend on the live as the most important part of their revenue stream. I would right. assume that's not going to change anytime soon. No, we've seen it over the last 10 years. We, we predicted kind of this rise of live as, as recording and streaming and downloads were going through their transition. The artist now, although you know, definitely wants to make sure his single is heard on Spotify and streamed on Apple. Uh, he's not making the revenue from that, that side of the business that he historically did. He's going to make his money now on the road when he tours, sponsorship, other right. means. But the live and the road are going to be the way he pays most of the bills and reaches most of his fans from an engagement. Now the streaming guys, Spotify for example, will tell me that they can aid the artists in understanding their fan base, knowing where they are and conceivably helping to fill uh, an auditorium or a stadium. Is that true? No, listen, we, we work with a lot of those, uh, the streaming businesses. Um, they have our API from Ticketmaster. Um, ultimately though, we're selling most tickets on our own platform. Buying a ticket is not like going through a supermarket as an as a impulse buy. The average fan goes to two and a half shows a year. It's a real planned experience. You got to bring your two buddies. They got to make sure they got time off. So these are really kind of like travel experiences. We look at ourselves as the concierge. What's your average ticket price at this point? I mean, concert, some of these concerts concert, are expensive. I know, but we, you know, that's kind of the top line you read. An average yeah. show is still $55. Okay. So still a so very you affordable. Two, you know, I'm dating myself here. When I look at that, that's not necessarily indicative of what no, the these average cost. show is still a much more affordable than going to a, a basketball game, you know, a the theater, or, or going probably to see even Springsteen a on Broadway. Certainly, yeah. That's an exceptional show, though, worth, worth every dollar. <laughs> it was. That's why I saw it twice, actually. 30% yeah. market share, just to come back to that for a minute, with the opportunity to gain a lot more, do you ever worry, though, about coming into the sites of regulators? I mean, there are some markets, frankly, Michael, where with a fragmented competitive landscape, somebody like your company at that level would start to at least be the target of those who say, hey, you've got, you've got too much. Yeah, I think, I think our margins show um, on the concert side, it's a very competitive business. Um, or we're the, you know, a 2% margin, we're the, uh, not doing a good job then, right? So it's a very competitive business. That, the, the, the real monopoly in the business is Aerosmith. Those are, the, those are the ones that only have 100 dates. So us and our competitors are in a very competitive space to actually buy that show here in, in, in New York or a tour. So we think the business is very competitive. Um, we just happen to be great at then building businesses around this concert to, met, to monetize it. Um, but in, the, in places like South America, we have a 0% market share. Asia, we're very low market share. Um, you know, South, Eastern Europe, very low market share, not in India. So a lot, a lot of big markets where we don't have any market share. Lots of room to grow before any regulation would ever be a concern. All right, well, the company's been growing very quickly and as you say, it seems to have a lot more room. Michael, thank you, appreciate your time. Thank you, appreciate it.